Sometimes I meet someone and know the child he or she once was because the child has grown up but has never been outgrown. There's a spontaneous friendliness, a wonder at life, and grace that could only belong to that child. On the other end of life, I look at an infant or child and wonder what sort of grandmother or grandfather am I seeing? Will this child grow in wisdom and grace and be a blessing to all? Will she live a full lifetime? Will he be marred terribly by the injustice, pain, and suffering that are inevitable in any life? Will she be forced to endure more than a fair share of that injustice, pain, and suffering? Will he cause joy or pain? Luke's Gospel presents two pregnant women. Luke tells us that each had reason to believe the child she carried was a son. We're also told that each of them was pregnant through an extraordinary act of God. Otherwise, they knew as little as any mother does about the child she bears. What their children would become was as much a mystery to Mary and Elizabeth as any child is a mystery to us. Elizabeth's child became a desert-dwelling religious teacher who taught his disciples how to live before God. His forthright fulminations against evil eventually cost him his life. Mary's child followed his father's trade as a carpenter. Later, he became an itinerant preacher. Eventually, he too paid with his life for what he became. What would Mary and Elizabeth have done if they had known in advance the lives their sons would live? Would they have despaired? Would they have terminated their pregnancies? Would they have done all in their power to prevent their sons choosing the paths they eventually traveled? We don't know. We are about to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We see pictures and statuettes of the child in the manger. We watch movies and television programs about children and the spirit of Christmas. In many places, Christmas has become a festival for children. Christmas is, of course, much more than a child's feast. But it is indeed a time for us to reflect upon children and the gifts we give them, the legacy we leave them. It is not always a good one. One of the dispiriting things at this time of year is adults supporting unbridled selfishness in children. For many, Christmas is the season of give me. But the point of gifting is the giving, not the receiving. I knew a child who at Christmas time would go with her parents to an orphanage to share her parents with children who had none. There is much that we do throughout the year to our children that warps the promise with which they are born. We provide them with entertainment that is, in effect, a form of child abuse because it will malform the child that God has given to the world as a unique gift. We may bring the child to church and provide for some religious education, but then show that our day-to-day -day lives bear no relation to the gospel we claim should be the guiding principle of our lives. A speaker once asked her audience, if you die tonight, will your children go to heaven? That simple question contains the challenge and the glory of a parent's vocation. But it is not limited to parents. We all play a part in raising the children of the world. Are we giving them all they need to be children of God through all eternity? Mary and Elizabeth could not protect their children from the dangers of life. They could, however, raise their sons to be men for whom faithfulness to God was more important than life itself. Can we do the same for our children? We will not be able to protect them from life, but we can point out to them the road to heaven. We can take them with us as we journey along that road. Can there be a better Christmas gift than that?